Speed. Speed is what airlines exist to sell, and speed is what Concorde offers the airlines. Twice as much speed as any jet in service today. Concorde, the world shrinker, halving travel times on long distance routes, flying west faster than the sun, getting you there and back while today's jets are barely ending the outward journey. But what good is speed without reliability? Airlines need fast turnarounds as well as fast flight times, high utilizations as well as high speeds. All that means reliability of the airframe, engines and systems. Proving that Concorde has this vital quality has been as much a part of the massive test program as proving performance and handling. The first prototype, 001, showed what a reliable aircraft Concorde is when it carried President Pompidou of France to the Azores for his meeting with President Nixon of the USA. The first exercise in supersonic statesmanship. It drew an envious comment from President Nixon. I wish we'd built it. And 001's successful South American tour again underlined the supersonic airliner's reliability. But the most dramatic demonstration of Concorde's reliability began at the BAC flight test base at Fairford in the early morning fog of June the 2nd, 1972. Concorde 002, the second prototype, is ready to take off on the longest demonstration tour undertaken by a supersonic airliner. A bold venture so early in a prototype aircraft's career. Its destination, the Near and Far East and Australia. Among its passengers, Aerospace Minister Michael Heseltine and his wife. After an hour's wait for the fog to thin, 002 climbs to find the sunshine. Ahead lie some 30,000 miles of route flying, covering 12 countries in four weeks, with supersonic demonstration flights in six countries. Two legs at high subsonic speeds bring 002 to its first demonstration point, Tehran. Here at Tehran, the passengers are headed by His Imperial Majesty the Shah and Shah of Iran, who had previously stated his country's interest in Concord. The Shah spends much of his 90-minute supersonic flight over Iran on the flight deck with 002's captain, Brian Trubshaw, BAC's director of flight test. Afterwards, he declares, we have decided on the purchase of Concord. It is something finished and done. Concord would be most ideal for us. It is a heartening start to the tour. On to Bahrain. On the next sector to Bombay, flying at Mark II for 30 minutes, Concorde takes one hour, 53 minutes, just half the normal scheduled flight time. A brief stop at Bangkok. Then another high-speed flight brings 002 to its second demonstration point, Singapore. The Prime Minister, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, pays a 20-minute visit to Concord. Two demonstration flights give VIPs, including members of the government, their first taste of supersonic travel before 002 returns low over the famous city of Singapore. On to Manila, 1,500 miles away, but less than two hours flying for Concord. With an hour supersonic and 47 minutes at Mark II, 002 is warming to its task. Even at twice the speed of sound, there isn't a tremor to shake the composure or the hand of the supersonic steward. As BAC's chairman, Sir George Edwards, pointed out later, 
the aircraft behaved so much like a scheduled service aircraft that people forgot it was really a prototype on test, and that it flew not at 600 miles per hour, but at 1,350 miles per hour. Tokyo, another 1,900 miles in an effortless two hours, eight minutes of flying, with over an hour at Mark II. Anida Airport, Tokyo, is one of the world's busiest airports. But Concorde is showing that it can fit neatly into existing airport environments, needing no special ground equipment, no special concessions from air traffic control authorities. Two supersonic demonstrations here, with the passengers including members of the Japanese Diet and executives of Japan Airlines, which already holds options on Concorde. Tokyo marks the midpoint of the tour. The second half begins. with Concorde flying south to Manila and then to Darwin in two hours, six minutes, again halving the normal flight time. En route from Darwin, 002 has made Concorde's first sustained supersonic flight over land. Because of a 500-mile detour to avoid townships and aboriginal settlements, comparisons with scheduled service times aren't possible. But 002 reeled off the 2,200 miles in a flight time of only two hours, 51 minutes with 56 minutes at supersonic speeds. Sydney, the famous landmark, slipped smoothly past below. Passengers on the demonstration flights include top Australian government representatives and senior executives of another option-holding airline, Qantas. After two more demonstrations at Melbourne, it's north again to Darwin, 2,100 miles in two hours, 41 minutes flying, with 41 minutes at Mark II and just over one hour supersonic. An important leg, this, to Singapore. It takes 002 through Indonesian airspace and over some of the Indonesian islands at speeds up to Mark II. But wherever Concorde flies supersonically over sparsely populated areas, in Indonesia, in Australia, in the Middle East, it causes no alarm, no social problems, nothing to justify the fears of the environmentalists. Singapore, Bangkok, Bombay, familiar ground now. At Dachan, Saudi Arabia, another supersonic demonstration flight. Heading the passengers of the Crown Prince, his Royal Highness Prince Tokyo bin Abdulaziz. This beautiful terminal building provides an ideal setting for the elegance of Concorde. Beirut. Last demonstration stop of the tour. Now 002 heads for one of its twin homes, Toulouse. An hour and a quarter of Mark II cruise shrinks the Mediterranean to little more than a lake. Estimated subsonic jet time for this route is four hours, 40 minutes. 002 neatly rounds off its tour by precisely halving it to just two hours, 20 minutes. 002, you're clear land, two eight right. London Heathrow, journey's end for 002. In four weeks, Concorde 002 has covered 46,000 miles in just over 62 hours of route and demonstration flying. It has added invaluable flight desk data to the log with 23 hours of supersonic flying and nearly 14 hours of Mark II. Convincing proof not only of Concorde's speed, but also of Concorde's reliability. And in 12 countries, it has shown people the future shape of air travel. Soon, supersonic airliners will operate alongside jumbo jets in mixed fleets.
There's a warm welcome for the crew and for aerospace minister Michael Heseltine, who, with the Lord Privy Seal, Lord Jellicoe, had represented the British government on 002's tour. And there's an even warmer welcome from crowds of ordinary people who, over the next few days, seize the opportunity to view the aircraft which has awakened their pride and captured their imagination as no airliner has ever done before. And while they throng the public galleries of the Queen's building, Her Majesty the Queen herself pays Concord a visit with Her Royal Highness Princess Anne. Other members of the royal family had already flown in Concord. Prince Philip actually took over the controls, flying at twice the speed of sound. Princess Margaret and Lord Snowden made a fabulous flight with Prince William and the Duke of Kent. And so too have the government ministers with responsibility for the programme. Mr John Davies, the Secretary of State for Industry, and Lord Carrington, the Secretary of State for Defence. After his flight, Mr Davies said, uh, it's now an aircraft which is uh, having passed through great periods of controversy and debate and argument and discussion. It is now in a new phase of its life, a new phase because we are now going to see this aircraft become a great commercial proposition, having been a very great technical proposition. And I think uh, every one of us in the government uh, feels that there is no effort to be spared to see that the uh, Concorde gets the commercial success that this uh, great project is due. British Prime Minister Mr Heath said he thoroughly enjoyed his supersonic flight. But VIP flights, however important, are incidental to the main task of proving and developing Concorde for airline service. During 1972, three aircraft were sharing the development flying, 001 and 002, the two prototypes, and 01, the first pre-production aircraft. By the end of June, approximately one-third of the planned total of about 3,500 hours flying had been completed. For 12 months, the total had been mounting at an average of 50 hours per month. The exhaustive ground test program, too, was forging steadily ahead. On the manufacturer's own test facilities, like this massive fuel rig at Filton, simulating every attitude of flight. At the Royal Aircraft Establishment, Farnborough, this complete airframe is now being fatigue tested. And in France, at the CEAT laboratory in Toulouse, this complete airframe is undergoing kinetic heat tests. At Toulouse, the second pre-production aircraft, 02, takes its place alongside the first prototype, 001, in the flight hangars. 02 represents virtually full production standard for the first time. 02 introduces aerodynamic refinements, improvements to the outer wing and leading edge profile, a distinctive reshaped rear fuselage. These developments are aimed at improving performance margins during cruising flight and at takeoff. Both pre-production aircraft have the redesigned nose and transparent visor. There are flight deck improvements too, embodying suggestions made by pilots of option holding airlines who have flown Concorde. 02 also has production standard Olympus engines, the Mark 602, with a new combined nozzle and thrust reverser system known as the TRA, Thrust Reverser Art, or Type 28 exhaust assembly. The thrust reversal buckets can be partially closed so that the jet E-flux can be varied to suit differing flight conditions. These new nozzles and engines mean less airport noise and virtually eliminate smoke, at least as far as Concorde is concerned. Thank you. 
While 02 was being prepared for first flight at Toulouse, 01 returned to the huge assembly hall at Filton to be modified for the next stage of flight testing. On the jigs alongside, the second and fourth production Concords are well advanced in assembly, and the sixth production airframe is in the join-up stage. At BAC's Weybridge factory too, the steadily increasing momentum of the production program is apparent. And again in the aerospatial shops at Toulouse, where the first production aircraft is nearing completion. Closely followed by Concorde's number three, and number five. These are sub-assemblies for aircraft six to ten taking shape in the jigs. These are the first Concords, which in 1975 will enter service with BOAC and Air Force. A Chinese delegation signed a preliminary purchase agreement for two Concords in Paris on July the 24th. 